We gotta take this thing for a test drive and see how powerful it is. It's undeniable! Whoa! Hey guys, my name is Tim and welcome to the Decent Garage. Behind me is the OG Crew Cab. This is a 12 valve Cummins Crew Cab that I built from the ground up. I've done a lot of work to this truck, but honestly, as far as power goes, it's still fairly stock. I estimate the horsepower to be between 225 and 250 horsepower, but I'm ready to take it to the next level. And with that, I'm happy to announce the newest series, the Road to 600 Horsepower. We're gonna take this VE pump, 12 valve Cummins, and try and hit the 600 horsepower mark. So this will be a really fun process. I would love to see other YouTubers or content creators get on board and make this kind of a little competition. I'm looking at you, Greg A. We're gonna have multiple dyno events along the way to get this tested, but it should be a really fun process. So with that, sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride. Behind me, I have all the parts for the Hungry Diesel Power Package Level 3 that we're gonna install. Now remember, if you use the Hungry Diesel, you can use my promo code DecentFirstGen to get 10% off your whole order, including the power packages. So we have a ton to do. We gotta get all these products from Power Package Level 3 installed in two days, because the dyno event is in three days. So we gotta get it all done. We're not gonna shoot for 600 horsepower for this event. What we're gonna do is incrementally go for more horsepower. Our first goal is 400 horsepower. So. Let's see what we can do. Let's see if we can get all these products installed and see if we can hit the 400 horsepower mark. So the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna install some ARP 427 head studs. That requires some milled rockers, which I got from Exotic Performance. And we're also gonna install some 60 pound valve springs. Now as a side note, the milled rockers did not come with the power package. Most people just go ahead and get their rockers milled for 50 to 100 bucks. But I found these on sale on Exotic's website, so I bought them and that's what we're gonna use. For the head studs, I'm gonna follow ARP's exact instructions for torque specs and everything, but there's a couple differences I'm gonna do because I'm not pulling the head and I'm not pulling the head gasket. So if you pull the head and you're gonna use a new head gasket, you need to follow ARP's instructions for torquing them down. They have three sequential torque specs that you have to reach. But because I'm leaving the head and not replacing the head gasket, what I'm gonna do is replace one stud at a time. And because the head gasket's already crushed, I'm pretty much gonna torque it all the way down to 125 right away. Dad, do you have time to play a round of checkers? Um, sure, yeah, let's let's play a quick game. All right, go ahead. Oh, I'm going to win. Ah. Ha, ha. Whoop. Dang it. Yes, I win. Whoop. One more round, let me be black this time. I can beat you. All right guys, we're making great progress. We have most of the head studs in, the ones that we can do right now. The last six we have to wait to do until we're gonna change out the rocker pedestals and the valve springs, which we're gonna do right now. But there you can see, so we've got all of them through the middle, through here and over here. So the last ones we have are these ones right here that go on the rocker pedestals. Okay, now we have a 13 mil right here. This is just holding the pedestal down to the head, and then we have our head stud that's holding the pedestal and the head down to the block.
Okay, now our rocker pedestal should come right off. Okay, let's head over to the workbench and we're going to switch this out to our new mill pedestal. Okay, here we have our rocker pedestal. So this is the original one and you can see this is our exotic one that's milled. So we're going to switch over this stuff, which is very simple. Just take out the snap rings, slide it off. I've got some assembly lube here that we're going to use. Here's one. There we go. That's all there is to it. Now real quick before we dive into the valve springs, let me tell you about the HVLP lift pump from the Hungry Diesel that you can win. This lift pump comes with everything you need to install it. And even on top of that, I have a video to show you how to install it on your truck. Now each of these options right here will get you one entry into the giveaway. Entries will be open until May 31st, 2022. Good luck and I hope you win it. So make sure to get entered to that. It's a great product, super easy to install. I have a video to install it too if you need that. But let's head back into the valve springs. So we have the engine at top dead center. So what we need to do, we're gonna do the valve springs on cylinder one and cylinder six. And then we'll turn the motor over a little more and we'll do two and five and then we'll turn it over more and do three and four. And the reason we do that, if we try and compress the valve springs and the piston isn't at the top of the cylinder, the valves will just go down as we compress the valve springs instead of stopping on the cylinder and letting the springs compress so we can get the keepers out. So we have to do it in that order. Okay, now that the keepers are out, we can loosen this. Just like that. So the valve springs I'm using are these Hamilton ones. Here's a part number. These came with the level three power package from the Hungry Diesel. Um, here they are, kind of a conical style and they came with new retainers and new keepers or locks as well. So we're switching all those out as well. Okay, and now we'll just Loosen this up and the keepers should set up. And then I just give it a couple small taps with a mallet just to make sure the keepers are set. And there we go. So now we can put our pedestal back in. And then the pedestal bolt is torqued to 25 foot-pounds, right there. There we go, that's how to do the valve springs. So we got the valve spring, the new rocker pedestal, and the head stud in. So now we have to do the rest of the cylinders. All right guys, it is time for Learning Moment 101 at Decent Garage. I just made a mistake and I want you guys to see what I did. I want you to know how I did it and I'm gonna tell you how to avoid it. So I got all the pedestals on, everything good to go, got everything torqued down. I was barring the engine over to set the valve lash and 
I noticed this push rod was not under the rocker arm. And so I tried to get it out and couldn't. So I pulled this pedestal and lo and behold, I had bent the push rod. The bottom tip of the push rod was not seated into the tappet. I barred the engine over so the cam turned, pushed the tappet and it bent the push rod. So I don't have any other stock push rods, but here in just a few weeks, we're gonna be installing Hamilton extreme duty push rods with new tappets, with a new Hamilton cam. So we're gonna do a bunch of stuff. So anyways, what I'm gonna do, I pulled one of these Hamilton extreme duty push rods out. I threw it in there, right there. And we're gonna run one of those until we get the others put in. But let that be a lesson learned. Make sure when you're doing this that the push rods get seated down into the tappet how they're supposed to before you torque down the pedestals and before you bar over the engine. Super critical. All right, I'm gonna get this all buttoned up and then we'll see how she runs, see how much more power we can make. This is super helpful, Lily. Oh, wait, 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 okay, very slow. Right there. That is it, yes, okay. Oh, that was so helpful. You have no idea. Alright guys, we got everything buttoned back up, looking good. Got the valve lash all set up, so that's good to go. Alright, so now that we have the valve lash set and everything's buttoned up, we gotta take this thing for a test drive and see how powerful it is. Whoa! The power! It's undeniable! Whoa! So as you can imagine, we're not able to actually test how much power this gives us because A, it doesn't actually give us any power and B, we have a ton more stuff to do and I don't wanna put the injector lines on and all that stuff before we do the turbo and the exhaust manifold and the injectors. The biggest performance gain from this install from head studs and valve springs is the peace of mind, is knowing that you're not gonna float a valve and you're likely not gonna ruin your head gasket. Now, it still can happen, but this is just a better way to be sure that it's less likely. That's the nice thing. We know that's done. That's kind of a preventative thing. So next video, we're gonna do a turbo. We're gonna do injectors, a steed speed manifold, downpipe, a couple more things, and then we're headed to the dyno event, which is two days away. I've gotta get this stuff cooking, so thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you guys in the next video. <laughs> Oh my gosh.